So you've forked a repo, and now how do you keep it up to date with the main repository that you forked from? I was asked this question after I made my last Git GitHub crash course for free code camp. So I thought I'd make this quick video on just an easy way to keep your repository in sync with the repo that you forked from. Hi, my name is Gwen. If you don't know me, I run this channel, Faraday Academy, and I make lots of different types of programming content and also do coding live streams here and over on my Twitch channel, which is also Faraday Academy. So if you learned something from this video, then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can get notifications about future videos. So this is my fork of the main Vue.js repository. I basically forked this, I think a couple months ago to use it for a demo, but you can see that since I forked it, made a copy of it for myself, Vue.js itself has received several updates that I don't have in my fork yet. Basically, the Vue.js project represented by purple here has continuously committed code changes, and my fork, represented by green, hasn't been able to receive any of these updates. So how do I keep my fork in sync with the Vue.js repository? In this video, I'm going to go over what I think is the best method for doing this. I'm going to clone this repository my fork of the repository locally, and then figure out how to get it in sync with the upstream. Now, if you were really working on developing and making changes to your fork, you probably already have it cloned locally, but I don't, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. Okay, so now it's cloned. I'm going to move into that directory, and now I can see I'm in a git directory here. So I'm going to do git remote dash V and I can see where I cloned from. It gives me the two URLs where I would basically pull code changes from and where I would push code changes to that I make locally. Now by default, these are both the same thing and you probably want to keep these both the same thing, but we also need to add the URL to the main Vue.js repository here that we forked from so we can get the changes from there. So I'm going to do git remote add, and you can see the name over here, origin. Now origin is just an alias or a name for this particular remote. So it's kind of like a shorthand for typing out this whole URL. Since I cloned the repo from this URL, git automatically saves a remote called origin for me that points to that URL. Now, I also want to do that for the repo that I forked from and a popular convention for aliasing the source repo is to call it upstream. I've also seen some people call it URL and other things. I think upstream makes a lot of sense because since we forked our code from there, our code is downstream from the original repo. So I'm going to alias it here as git remote add and then give it the alias upstream. And then the last command line argument I need is the actual URL that I want to save into this upstream alias. And then I can go to Vue.js and copy the git location, paste it here. And so I can do git remote add upstream. So now I'm doing git remote add upstream and the URL. I'm going to hit enter. Now it doesn't give me any feedback there, but if I do git remote v again, then it added URL under the alias upstream. So I have my fork under the name origin, and then I have the original under the name upstream. So I want to update origin with changes that happened in upstream. Now I can pull down all of the remote changes from upstream by using git fetch upstream. And now Vue.js is quite an active repository, so there's a ton of new branches that it just fetched from the upstream repository to my local machine. But you can see that the branch names here are 
upstream slash upstream slash upstream slash feature SSR, etc. So they're all upstream slash. So they aren't actually merged with my local branches yet. To merge in changes with my local branch, I would have to do git merge. And then I am on the dev branch right now in my local fork. So if I wanted to merge the dev branch from upstream into this dev branch, I could say upstream slash dev and merge that into my dev branch. And now it's trying to merge the code, but before it merges, because it's going to make a commit to merge the changes, it's asking if we want to add a commit message here. And just like a standard commit, if there's a reason why you're doing this, or you need to explain the what or the why, you can add that here. In most cases, if you are merging, you might just want to exit this screen and use this default commit message that they give you, which is merge remote tracking branch upstream dev into dev. That's usually descriptive enough. So I'm gonna exit this screen, just use the default message. I can exit by doing colon Q, enter. And now all of the changes from the upstream dev branch have been merged into my local dev branch. And you can do that merging with whatever branch you wanted to. So let me check out another branch, git checkout master. And now you can see I get this warning because now I have upstream master and origin master locally. So my git is confused at which one I mean when I say check out the master branch. So there are a few ways to tell it which branch I meant. One of the easiest things to do would just be just type in origin slash master or upstream slash master. And then I could hit enter and check out that branch. I can also tell git to either prefer origin or upstream by using, like it says right here, the dash dash, oops, dash dash track option. And now for at least the dev and the master branches, if I check out either of these, Git now knows that I all, always want to prefer the origin when I'm checking out branches locally. But if I check out a different branch, then Git is going to ask me the same question again, do I want upstream or origin? So to resolve this confusion, you can set a preference for the whole repository in your git config and say edit and it takes you into your git config here and after core I'm going to add a line and here I basically set my checkout preference to default to origin. So now I save this with colon w and then I can quit with colon q. And now I can check out any branch without denoting whether I want origin or upstream. And it's definitely nice to set that option inside your git config. If you're working in a repo where you are trying to keep the origin in sync with the upstream repository. So you're fetching both locally. Of course, that configuration I set is only for this git repository. If I wanted to do the same thing globally, I could do git config the same edit flag and then just dash dash global. And this pulls up my global git configuration and I could set my preferred remote in here the same way, but I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna quit here. Let me get back to the dev branch. So git checkout dev. And now it's still saying that my local branch is ahead of origin dev. It says by seven commits here. Sorry, it said six before, but I accidentally made another commit off camera. So don't worry about the number of commits here. And I can update my forked repository under the alias origin by doing git push. And now you can see GitHub's telling me that my repository is no longer behind the main Vue.js repository, it's actually ahead because I made some merging commits here. So that's basically how you keep a repository up to date after you fork it. You can just fetch changes and then merge changes and then push changes to your fork. And then of course you get changes that you make in your fork back into the base repository by making a pull request. And then your changes get merged back in if your pull request gets accepted and merged.
So that's basically it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave me a comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.